What's up everybody and welcome back to the channel and today we are back on Football Manager 2024 as we continue on our Spurs save and if you missed out on the last episode then you missed out on quite a bit. We've been up and down in terms of form um, again ending it in not quite a great light in the 3-0 thrashing by City away and we've had to sell Basuma because basically you wanted out and Newcastle came in with like a £70 million bid on him um, so we've actually got a bit of money to spend um, and we're in the middle of transfer deadline day and trying to find some replacements to come in and, and take some positions up um, in the squad so the first bit of business that we're going to do is sign Drewsbury Hall so we're going to bring Drewsbury Hall in for about 27 million um, I think he's a great tireless midfielder he's got great stats physically he's great overall he'll be a good box-to-box -box midfielder for us to have and I think he'll be a great asset to the team is he as good for Suba? No, but I think for what we're trying to fill in at this point of the season, nobody is going to be as good as Basuma. So hopefully he can be a good addition to the squad and with it being an English player, it'll help with the whole homegrown status that we need in the uh, squad table as well. So that will be the first bit of business to today's episode. And the second bit of business that we're going to do today on today's episode is signing Turam. We've bought him from Nice for about £49 million, and to be fair, if we're going to get as good a replacement for Basuma and someone that can develop a little bit further as well, I think Turam's a great addition. As you can see from his stats, he does a bit of everything. He's a great playmaker and also can do a few other things as well, box to box, ball winning. He, he's got the entire package, really. So I think it's two really sound replacements uh, for Basuma, and if say Ben Tanker ends up leaving I think we've got the midfield covered really for the rest of the season so yeah great bit of business I think on transfer deadline day and I'm happy the board is able to back me up on it and that will be it for the January transfer window so all done and dusted we brought in Umar Sadiq for 33 million we bought Drewsby Hall in for 27 million and brought in Kefran Turam in for 49 million of course Basuma going Initially for 48 million, but can go up to 70 million. Saw went out on loan, and Brookings Foster went out for a cheap fee as well to Charlton. So, yeah, overall, I think I would have liked to have had that in the summer. Um, not necessarily Basuma Luving, obviously, but having those three guys come in so that we've got a bit more, you know, a bit more depth in the squad overall. But to have that for the second half of the season, I think it's a really good job on our part. So, hopefully, we can kick on with these players in the team because. Currently, we sit in 8th and we're a point back on 7th on Newcastle and we're 12 points back on the top 4. But realistically, I think the most we can hope for is a top 6 finish. So it's up to us to try and chase down Bournemouth and let's see what we can do with the fixtures coming up. And with that being said, we are going to be playing our first game of today's episode. We're going to be playing at home to Arsenal, of course, our biggest rivals on the Premier League circuit. And... We're going to be starting a couple of the new signings as well. We're going to get Rafinha on the right as well. We're going to have Jusby Hall starting as a box to box midfielder. And yeah, let's see what we can do against Arsenal. Hopefully we can pick up some points and try and close that gap down to them a little bit because they're on 43 points. So closing that down to six points would be a nice little uh, bit of momentum to pick up heading into the rest of the, the back end of the season now that we're in early February. So... Yeah, fingers crossed we can do a good job and pick up some points. Obviously, Son's not available because he's away on international duty. But we are coming to the end of some of those players being away. So hopefully we can get a good result. So let's go and get a result. So here we go then. Kickoff has begun. And as you can see on the table, on the right-hand side, we are still sitting outside the European spots. But with a win, we could move into them. So, And again, the form book doesn't suggest that we're going to do it because Arsenal are in first. And that's a great save from Forster to start things off again. Vicario being injured means that Forster gets a start. Or gets a few starts, I should say, because he has started the past couple of games. So hopefully he uh, keeps a, a relatively low amount of goals out for us as Jorginho jumps over Romero's tackle. But we win it back. And we look to go on the counter, but unfortunately nothing doing so far. Early, early period, not many chances going. But it still remains nil-nil. We win the ball back. Richarlison heading it down to Romero. Looking to craft our first opening, but Saka wins the ball back in Arsenal's half. Edwards now with the ball. He's just driven this down the right side and Drewsby Hall putting the pressure on. 
Looking for a good first start from the new signing. As Jesus plays a lovely through ball there to Odegaard, who's chipped it over Foster, and that's a lovely finish, unfortunately for us. But you can't say much about that finish that hasn't wouldn't already be said in a commentary box because that was a lovely finish. And not much else happens in the rest of that first half, and it stays 1-0 again. No real chances for us. Arsenal being really stingy with the chances we've been able to create. And again, possession's been fairly even, which has been pleasing, but that's about it, really. No real top performances. No real, really poor performances, really, which is strange, because usually we have one or two that maybe drop a bit of a clanger, but nothing to comment on so far. So hopefully we can change things around a little bit here and try and pick something up in that second half. So again, we're banging into the middle of the second half now and there's been pretty much no highlights. We've tried changing things up. We've tried being a little bit quicker on the ball. We've tried going a bit wider now, trying to maybe just put a few balls into Richarlison if we can, but nothing's nothing's really happening. There's no highlights whatsoever. I mean, has anyone else had a highlight list of half yet in FM24? Let me know. Oh, and there we go. Of course, Arsenal. it's Arsenal with the, with the corner and Rice heads it over. <laughs> of course it is. So, yeah, not, uh, not a great day at the office for us. We're going to bring Kulusevski on. We're going to bring Brennan Johnson on as a... As a last throw of the dice, really, to try and just generate something. If we can just get an equaliser, I'd take a point, really. And it shows the corner, and we don't even get that. So it's going to be a disappointing day at the office again. And we're going to fall 1-0 to Arsenal at home. And again, no real chances. Must have been a hell of a boring game to watch on the TV screen. But it is what it is. We've got 14 games left to try and get into those European spots. Again, the aim from the from the board was top half finish. We're currently doing that. We are very close to falling out of it, though, if we're not careful. So, yeah, we need to try and find a way to score more goals because that, that is something we've been severely lacking this season. And in big news in the FM world, Pochettino has been sacked by Chelsea. Nagelsmann is considered a leading candidate, apparently, and with them being, what, a point behind us in 11th. Not really a surprise for Chelsea because they would probably have been harbouring expectations of a European finish. Again, kind of surprised we haven't been sacked yet in all honesty, but as long as we finish top half, I think that keeps us in a job. Um, again, let's double check the vision to make sure I've got that right. Yeah, record a Premier Division top half. Um, as long as we do that, then they'll be satisfied. So, And hopefully with that, finishing top half if we finish top half then it means that we'll be able to you know get some signings in during the summer get rid of some of the deadwood that aren't really playing that well this year and really start to formulate the team that we want to have on the pitch so yeah let's see how we do against Bournemouth and yeah hopefully pick up some form and unfortunately for us it was another defeat where we fall even further back on the teams in Europe we're now five points back on Brentford with 13 to go, and we're now sitting in 11th, two points behind Chelsea, three points behind Brighton, and four points behind Newcastle. So even finishing top half doesn't look like it's a realistic prospect. Thankfully, though, we have Chelsea next, so we can change that a little bit in terms of things going in our favour. So yeah, let's see what we can do in the next game. I'm going to change the formation. I think we need to change things in tactics-wise. I think we can do things a little bit better, and I think we can be a little bit sharper in terms of uh, how we play. And I think we need to be a bit more defensively sound because we've been leaking goals left, right, and centre a little bit recently. And if we can't keep teams out, we're definitely not going to pick up points when we only score one odd goal every few games. So, yeah, we need to we need to change things up and hopefully it'll improve us for the better. So here we go then. This is going to be at home to Chelsea. Manager, John Terry. He's currently on in charge of Chelsea at the minute, so it would be even better if we could beat Chelsea today. We've got Vicari on goal, Emerson on the right, Romero and Van der Ven at centre-back, Davies at left-back, Bentancur, Madison and Drewsby Hall setting up our new look midfield, and Rafinha, Richarlison and Sadiq leading the front line. Son is currently absolutely knackered, so couldn't even put him on the bench. We need to give him a rest, really, and hopefully that'll see him... Well, hope him see him recover for pretty much the second half of this season and be able to put in a good run of form. Kulusevski still recovering from an injury, but he's looking a little bit better now, so he's on the bench. And yeah, hopefully with the with the starting 11 and the, the tweaks to the tactics, we'll be able to have a good impression 
uh, would make a good impression at least on today and we'll be able to beat Chelsea and hopefully get some free points over our bitter rivals. So here we go then. Uh, new look at Sadiq, um, who we haven't really seen play for us because he's been away on international duty. And we're also obviously giving Rafina another run out on the right and Jewsby Hall is going to be in the midfield as well. Madison with a free kick though, 10 minutes in and it's a great start. And James Madison playing a little bit deeper today It is an advanced playmaker. Makes the most of it with a fantastic free kick to put us 1-0 up. And that is exactly the start we needed to give us a bit of a shot in the arm heading in to the rest of this season. And hopefully a good start to this game as well. So how can we build on that? Madison passes it to Drewsbury Hall. Sadiq's through. Makes it 2-0. There we go. The brand new signing leading the line. And he gets his first goal for Tottenham Hotspur at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. And he makes it 2-0 within 12 minutes against Chelsea. Hopefully this is the start of the turnaround. Although if it's just a temporary happy moment, it's not a bad one to have, is it, when it's against Chelsea? Bit of a lengthy highlight going on here. 23 minutes in, but we're, we've are we got the ball back. Jewsby Hall gives it away to Chalobla, though. Madueke, although it's intercepted well by Emerson. Flew ball to Rafinha, and he makes it free. I think he was onside. I think the centre-back was playing him on. We'll get a check from VAR to confirm whether or not it was a, a valid goal. And it's been disallowed. He must have just been off. Let's take a look at the replay. It was a lovely through ball from Sadiq. Oh, okay. I thought that centre-back was about five yards further back there, so I'm just blind. And that will be half-time, and it is 2-0. And again, not many chances going for either side. Four shots on our side, three shots on Chelsea's. Possession pretty even. It's been a pretty even game, but we've got two early goals in the process. And again, we've scored two goals in the first time in a while, and it's hopefully making a bit, making a bit of a difference um, in terms of the players' confidence, and hopefully we can see this out now with about half an hour to go and the latest highlight playing out. So, yeah, it's uh, good signs, hopefully. But, again, is it just... Is it... The question I'm asking at the minute is, oh, Jackson's through. He's made it 2-1. Was he offside, though? The main question I'm asking, I'll finish my point from before, is basically... Is this just a, because it's our rivals, we're up for it and we've got a bit of energy about us and a couple of signs have come in and there's a bit of a bit of confidence being built there. But time will tell because we've got Wolves next who are down near the relegation battle and if we can beat them, get a couple of wins back to back, start to build some momentum, who knows what could happen. Oh, and then Cuckoo's got one back for Chelsea. It bounced all over the place in the box and he's just lashed that in and he makes it 2-1. We played really well up until this point, but are Chelsea going to claw back a two-goal lead? Van der Ven deals with it well. Romero heads it out to Madison. Can we hit a counter here? No. We decide to keep the ball. Smart decision, as always, for Madison. And Perisic now moves the ball forward to Rafinha. Doesn't get through. Pedro Porro res it to Madison and makes it 3-1. Was it onside, though? Please be onside. Pretty please. With a cherry on top. And it was. It counts. 3-1. Nice bit of play there. I thought for a second, you know, we might let that two-goal lead slip. But the boys have, have come through and Madison makes it a double. And one last highlight to play out with two minutes of injury time to play. Porro on the right-hand side here. Plays it to Bentanker. Madison goes for a hat-trick and it doesn't quite work out. But it goes for a corner. Perisic puts his arms up, ready to whip this one in. Can we get a fourth? We're on minus six goal difference at the minute, so every goal would count, but Sanchez claims that, and that should be game over, ladies and gentlemen. And it is. It's 3-1. Fantastic result for everybody. Hopefully a bit of a confidence boost with three goals and a decent defensive performance as well. And it looks like the tactical tweaks worked. Um, let's see if that continues on in future games with Wolves coming up next. And I'm pleased to report we've managed to make it back-to-back -back wins for the first time in a good long while in the league with a 3-1 win over Wolves. So what that means, we move up into ninth in the league and we are now four points back on Newcastle. Got a bit of a gap now as well to Chelsea who are in 11th, so always a nice little bonus to be on top of Chelsea. But yeah, we uh, hopefully can kick on now. We've got an away trip to United next at Old Trafford. Can we go and get some points there or even just pick up a singular point and, and hopefully 
continue on this momentum because we're going to need it for the last 11 games of the season. So let's see what happens when we head to Old Trafford. And in terms of the Carabao Cup, Villa turned out to be winners, winning it in extra time against Man City. So congratulations to them on a trophy. Again, kicking myself really that we didn't, weren't able to make a better run in the Carabao Cup because I felt like that was a trophy we could have got really. But hopefully with a second season, we'll be able to maybe nab a trophy um, and have a much better second season. But we've got to get to the end of this one first before we start thinking about a second season. And it's been confirmed that Nagelsmann has taken charge now at Chelsea. So, again, we'll have to look out for their form and see how they're going to do. An excellent appointment for Chelsea. Not one that I don't think... It's one I think that could happen in real life eventually um, if things don't go right for Poch and Nagelsmann looks for, for a club job. Um, so, yeah, we'll have to see how that goes for him. But, yeah, it's, uh, it's certainly an interesting appointment and one we'll have to keep an eye on. So here we go then, we're heading back to Old Trafford, we played them of course in the Carabao Cup earlier this year, getting pasted pretty much when we went there, so hopefully this time will be a better job of it. So our midfield will be Skip, Madison and Ben Tanker. a couple of injuries here or there, we do have Turam back though from injury, um, he's now on the bench, um, in terms of in terms of everybody else, the leading line, it'll be Sadiq, Son and uh, Rafinha on the right. And then the usual back four of Royal, Romero, Vanderven and Davies. Again, that's something I'm going to look to try and strengthen and certainly add some depth to over the summer if we get a chance of a second season with Spurs. So here we go then. It's going to be an away trip to Old Trafford, pretty much matching up man for man in terms of formation. And again, looking for a positive result of any kind to try and continue on the momentum we've had against Chelsea and Wolves. But a sloppy pass in the middle of the park like that to Hoyland is not going to be the way to start the game. And it's not even hit 10 minutes and we've conceded already to United. What a fantastic start. And it's 2-0, corner, uh, corner, free kick from Fernandez, And it's headed in at the back post. And again, it's uh, tapped in there from Anthony. Varane coming in at the back post. Anthony's there just to nudge it in. So, 2-0 down early on. And now I'm thinking to myself, oh, God, we've only got 10 games to go and we're seven points back on the top seven. Well, five points back, sorry, on the top seven. Are we actually going to be able to turn this round? But it, we've had back-to-back -back wins, so not too disheartened. And United are second in, in the Prem, so with the way we're playing... Can't be too surprised by this, but again, it's never great to be going 2 0 down into half time from a sloppy goal in the first 10 minutes and then conceding from a set piece. It's not great, is it? So, 10 minutes in, and we're looking to try and build something. Kuzeski loses it to Rashford, though, and United are looking to hit us on the counter again. And yeah, would be uh, a summary of our season here if we were to go and get battered, I think. And Hoyland scored a second one. And he makes it 3-0 and really don't know what we're supposed to do when we give the ball away sloppily in, in areas we shouldn't really give it away. But again, it, it speaks to the improvements we need to make in, in the summer, I think. We need to improve defensively. We've had a good couple of games back-to-back -back against the lower half opposition. We've just got to try and translate that into the rest of the season, really, and hopefully we can um, have a decent end to the season. But it's not looking great at the minute. We need to try and batten down the hatches a little bit and hold on to and not let it be like 4 5 nil here because it could quite easily get away from us. Don't want to lose more goal difference than we need to. And Mount's going to go for a shot here if we're not careful. Anthony now runs into the box and he gets his second of the game and makes it 4. Well, that's confirmation. It was 4 nil in the end. Again, it's hard to find positives in any of that performance. I can't find positives in that performance, really. Um, we stay in 10th, thankfully. Still a three-point gap to us in Chelsea. Minus seven goal difference. So just taking a look at the schedule for the end of the season um, with the sort of the last 10 games, for me, I think the majority of them are winnable. The only one I would say I would probably confidently say we're probably not going to win is the Liverpool game. Doesn't mean we're not going to give it a good shot. But I would say the Liverpool game is probably the one where we'll probably slip up. But if we can just put three, four wins together on either side of Liverpool, we can have a good end to the season. And we should be able to do that with the teams involved. 
So we're going to play the final game of today's episode and we're going to be playing at home to Luton. Hopefully try and generate some momentum. Romero is out with an injury, so Eric Dyer does come in. We're going to have uh, Turam starting out, although I was saying that his fitness isn't actually where we want it to be. So we're not going to start Turam just yet. We are going to bring Lo Celso back into the fold. And again, that forward line, I'm pretty happy with having Kuzevsky, Rafinha and Son leading the line and Sadiq on the bench. Um, just hopefully we can, we've can. we got to pick up a result against Luton, surely. So here we go then, first highlight of the game. Rafinha with a corner and it goes out, but Kuzevsky picks it back up, dribs it to the, to the byline. Rafinha at the back post again. Nothing doing this time. Good bright start though with this highlight. Hopefully another chance to come from it. As Emerson plays it back to Bentancur, Dyer now to Lo Celso. Again, moving the ball around well. We're going to have to move it pretty quickly with a packed in defence like Luton's. You know, you're going to have to be crisp with the ball. You're going to have to move it the right way. We can't really afford to make many bad passes. Oh, it's a great save from the keeper there. Lo Celso heading it down to Son and the keeper making a last ditch attempt to save it and he tips it away and it stays nil-nil. Madison with the through ball to Kulizewski at the back post there, Son, and he makes it 1-0 inside the first 20 minutes, and it's a goal we needed. The longer the game goes on, you know, the more confident Luton are going to get, and thankfully we've got the goal nice and early, so hopefully a sign of things to come. would love to get a couple more and try and build the confidence in the players, but we'll take what we can get at this point. If it finishes 1-0, we'll take it as it's another three points on the board. Getting close to the end of this first half and not many highlights to really talk about, but a nice ball there from Kuzeski, but Son can't get onto the end of it and Kaminsky picks it back up. And with about 12 minutes to go, it remains 1-0, but this highlight's going to go on for a little bit longer. Something I've noticed in FM24, I thought there was really long highlights at times in FM23, but 24 takes it another level to make it hopefully a bit more unpredictable. And it's an own goal in the end as Emerson puts a ball in, but Baddy puts it into the back of his own net. Unfortunate for Luton, but we will certainly take that slice of luck and we go 2-0 up heading towards the back end of the first half. And Madison's made it 3-0 from a goal really out of nowhere. It was bouncing everywhere. Ball over top to Kuzeski, who heads it over to Madison. And yeah, uh, lovely bit of play really. Benton Kerr passing it over. Kuzeski heads it in. Madison gets into the box and finishes it nicely at the near post. So 3-0 before half time. Son now down the left-hand side. Rafinha dribbling past a couple of defenders. Madison puts it in to make it four. And it is turning into a bit of a drubbing here. And to be honest, for our goal difference, it's exactly what we need. And Kulusevsky puts it in for five before half-time. And again, if we can keep this momentum going, we might get it to eight or nine by the end of the game. I don't want to get greedy, but that's how it's looking right now. And with us being 5-0 up, I've took some of the first team players off and um, we've brought on Sadiq, Richarlison, Turam and Hoiberg just to rotate things a little bit, get some minutes into these legs, especially Turam because he's not really started yet or, or got to full fitness but hopefully with a half an hour against Luton when we're 5-0 up we'll ease that process for him a little bit um, and yeah we'll see if we can get some goals into, into Sadiq and Richarlison before the end of the game as Rafina now into the box it hasn't been given no, I, the way he went down, I thought he was looking for a penalty, but it hasn't been given. So, yeah, we continue on 5 0 up and hopefully stay in the same before the end of the game. And it's going to be 18 minutes to go. And we pick that ball up. That's just volleyed into, into our defense. And again, we'll be interested to see how quickly Turin develops into this Spurs team. And Sadiq now makes it almost six. Um, because I think he's going to be a big asset for us coming into the back end of the season once he hits full fitness. And that's also trying to win that header. Ben Tanker makes it six with 15 minutes to go. And we're almost wiping out our entire go negative goal difference here in this one game. So thankfully we've had this game and hopefully this can be the start of a comeback in form for the rest of the rest of the season. And there we go, ladies and gentlemen. It will finish 6-0. Fantastic performances all around on the pitch. And again, glad to get some minutes into Turem and Sadiq as well. So we'll take that on. And hopefully this will be the start of a good run of form. 
And there you have it, folks. That is how we will finish today's episode. We'll finish in eighth position. Obviously, a couple of teams around us have got games to play, but we've re- greatly reduced that goal difference as well with the Luton game. Um, so hopefully, with a few more games in the bag and a few more points on the board, we can start to kick on and push on for that top seven finish that we're desiring. Again, we've got to be looking at Newcastle to drop points and us to remain consistent, but I think we can do it. As always, guys, if you have enjoyed today's episode, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you next time where we will be finishing the first season in that next episode. So stick around because it's going to be a hell of a ride one way or another. I'll see you soon.